there must be an immediate ceasefire. For at least the next six weeks, which is what is currently on the table. Hello everyone, welcome back to My Left Eye. Israel have once again thrown hopes of a ceasefire in Gaza out of the window despite international efforts and calls for a halt to the fighting from both Joe Biden and Kamala Harris over the weekend. We'll go into the details of how the negotiations broke down shortly, but first a look at what the US Vice President had to say in her speech where she appealed to Benjamin Netanyahu to stop the conflict and allow aid into Gaza while hostages are exchanged. The immense scale of suffering in Gaza there must be an immediate ceasefire. For at least the next six weeks, which is what is currently on the table. Hamas claims it wants a ceasefire. Well, there is a deal on the table. And as we have said, Hamas needs to agree to that deal. Let's get a ceasefire. Let's reunite the hostages with their families and let's provide immediate relief to the people of Gaza. And just a few days ago, we saw hungry, desperate people approach aid trucks, simply trying to secure food for their families after weeks of nearly no aid reaching northern Gaza. And they were met with gunfire and chaos. Our hearts break for the victims of that horrific tragedy. Yesterday, the Department of Defense carried out its first airdrop of humanitarian assistance, and the United States will continue these airdrops. And we will work on a new route by sea to deliver aid. And the Israeli government must do more to significantly increase the flow of aid. No excuses. They must open new border crossings. They must not impose any unnecessary restrictions on the delivery of aid. They must ensure humanitarian personnel, sites, and convoys are not targeted, and they must work to restore basic services and promote order in Gaza so more food, water, and fuel can reach those in need. So that might seem all well and good, but obviously as the title of this video and this article from the BBC describes, hopes for a ceasefire have faltered ahead of Ramadan. Let's take a look through this article and get some more details says hopes have been high over the past week following talks in Paris that there could be a new ceasefire deal in place for the start of the Islamic holy month of Ramadan next week. However, while Hamas has sent a delegation to Cairo for further negotiations with Egyptian and Qatari mediators, Israel has not. This looks like a serious new block. Israeli officials quoted in local media demand clear answers from Hamas on key issues as well as a list of surviving Israeli hostages who could be released with an agreement. Meanwhile, a senior Hamas official told the BBC that practically it's impossible to know who's still alive because of continued Israeli bombing. They are in different areas with different groups. We have asked for a ceasefire to collect that data. Dr. Nine went on to say such valuable information about the hostages could not be given for free and he and other senior Hamas figures have also been continuing to demand a full ceasefire and withdrawal of Israel troops from Gaza rather than a temporary troops. The United States and regional players with leverage will now be putting pressure on both Israel and Hamas, trying to shore up recent progress on the potential deal. This would reportedly see some 40 Israeli hostages released in exchange for about 10 times as many Palestinian prisoners being freed from Israeli jails. More than 130 hostages are still believed to be held by Hamas. Israeli officials have said that at least 30 of them are dead. Over the course of a proposed 40-day truce, there would be a surge in desperately needed aid entering Gaza. Without a deal, there is a higher threat of further spread of tensions during Ramadan, which this year is due to begin on the 10th or 11th of March, depending on the lunar calendar. Israel is expected to impose restrictions on access for Palestinians to the 
holiest Muslim site in occupied East Jerusalem, the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound, citing its security concerns. The site, which is also the holiest place in Judaism, known as the Temple Mount, has often been a flashpoint for violence in the decades-old Israel-Palestinian conflict. Uh, we've just heard what Kamala Harris had to say about the situation. In the article, it says her comments were some of the strongest language used yet to describe the situation by a senior US government official and reflect the growing frustration within Washington, the closest ally of Israel, about developments in the war. Increasingly, what is happening on the ground in Gaza is hurting President Biden's presidential re-election campaign. In Israel, there's also intense domestic pressure on the war cabinet to agree a new deal from the families of the hostages. Thousands of Israelis joined them for the last leg of a four-day solidarity march, which began close to the Gaza border at one of the sites that was a focus of the deadly 7th of October Hamas attacks and ended in Jerusalem on Saturday night. Uh, they held up Israeli flags and posters of the hostages. Finally, it says that speaking at the rally, Sharon Sharabi, whose brother Eli is still believed to be held in Hamas uh, captivity, said, we've lost four members of our family, the Sharabi family, my family, your family, we do not intend listen carefully leaders of israel we do not intend to bring a fifth coffin here so clearly there's a lot of pressure now on israel on benjamin netanyahu to be able to process some kind of ceasefire some sort of peace deal this is at least the third time that benjamin netanyahu has pulled out of ceasefire talks this could also mean that president biden is considering withdrawing support from benjamin netanyahu who has faced protests in his own country to step down over this issue as well. Let's take a look at a recent Twitter post and see who the United States could potentially be lining up as their new Israeli ally should Benjamin Netanyahu be ousted from his position as Israeli Prime Minister. Here you can see, according to Tory Fibs on Twitter, the man most likely to be the next Prime Minister of Israel is Benny Gantz. He's currently in Washington having high-level meetings with United States politicians this is being received in Israel as a rebuke to Netanyahu and a signal that the USA is seeking to bolster Netanyahu's rival. In addition, several high-profile figures in the Israeli army resigned last night. It's too early to be sure if these events are linked or to say we are witnessing something of a diplomatic coup against Netanyahu. So it could be the case that the United States are lining up Netanyahu's successor. We'll try and keep you posted on events as they develop. Let us know your thoughts in the comments what you think about the breakdown in these latest rounds of ceasefire talks also your thoughts about whether you believe benny gantz is being lined up to replace netanyahu we'd love to hear your thoughts thanks so much for watching please help to spread the good word by subscribing hitting the like button and sharing our content around you can support the channel even more by joining us with one of our membership packages that have lots of perks for you to enjoy starting from just 99 pence per month or to make a one-off contribution please visit our buy me a coffee page links are in the description below thanks again for watching my left eye will be seeing you soon